This video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Stay tuned to find out more. Y'all might be thinking right now, I wonder, did he smoke something before he came out here? The answer is yes. I rolled up a little something. I knocked the edge off. And yes, as you probably could have guessed by this moment, I have decided in 2020 to run for president. Ambition is a motivator like no other. And when you combine it with talent, the likelihood of getting what you want in life increases massively. Throughout the years, we've seen raw talent and drive create greatness and make royalty out of those born with next to nothing. But we've also seen ambition go unchecked, reaching a point where it mixes with greed and entitlement to lead a once trusted person into a dangerous position of delusion. Since the beginning of his career, Ye has regularly bought everything that he sought to accomplish into reality. A movie that showed his journey from producer to superstar, Netflix's Genius, proved that his ability to predict what would happen in the future is nothing new. Back then, he wanted to be so famous that he could drop the last name off my name. Later, he said that he'd visualize his Grammy speech, only to go on and win 22 of them. From interning at Fendi to overseeing his own fashion empire, Ye has seemed to win at every industry he's been a part of, while completely changing the game in the process. But this time around, as he gears up for a second try at the highest office in the US, fans believe that this dream has led him to a point where he's finally found something he has no chance of accomplishing. If you ask Ye himself, his decision to first start this journey for the White House was a relatively impulsive one. So, what are you doing? You running for president? It was something that God put on my heart back in 2015. A few days before the MTV Awards, it hit me in the shower. And when I first thought of it, I just started laughing to myself. All this like joy came over my body, through my soul. What does that mean to you? Do you have a plan that's different? What is it about that that, that is your calling? God is calling me to take this position. I'm not here to down Trump, down Biden. I'm just here to express why. God has called me to take this position. All right, so here's a fun fact. Did you know that there are 8 billion people in the world that could be playing Raid Shadow Legends right now? So why waste time? Raid Shadow Legends is one of the most popular and fun mobile games with over 80 million downloads worldwide and the graphics of a console game. When you first start playing, there's four champions to choose from. Kale's poison and AoE attacks make him a useful team member even in the end game. Elaine is all about boosting critical damage for those heavy hits. Gallic is perfect for every speed demon out there. And my personal favorite, Aethel can boost her attack and defense, then take out every enemy before they can even react. New players can enjoy a special Valentine's Day themed adventure with the Raid Love Quest. All you gotta do is download Raid from the links below, copy your player ID, and then head to raidlovequest.plarium.com. There, you can enter your player ID and set out on this heartfelt quest. Play one of the mini games to win some fantastic prizes, including V-Day themed raid champions and even Amazon gift cards worth up to $1,000. And if you already play raid, just go to raidlovequest.plarium.com to find a special promo code that everyone can use to get a small Valentine's gift. So what are you waiting for? You can download Raid Shadow Legends right now for free. That's right, completely free. Just follow the link in your description below or scan the QR code on on screen now and collect your new player bonuses worth $30, including free epic champion Chinoru. With that said, let's get back to the video. Despite the seriousness that he gave to every conversation surrounding his run, Ye seemed doomed from the beginning. On top of missing the deadline to get on the ballot in several states, his only rally didn't inspire confidence in his stability or vision for the nation. Instead, it inspired divisive sound bites and casted doubt over his well being. After apparently sinking $12.5 million of his own money into the campaign, Ye's run flopped, getting only 60,000 votes across 12 states. From the disaster that was a divorce from Kim Kardashian and beheading a cartoon version of Pete Davidson in a music video, to severing his ties to Gap, Ye's found himself in a position where, if he wasn't already being mocked for attempting to run for president, the idea now borders on complete delusion. When, when I run for president in 2024, we're going to definitely know what y'all laughing at. When I run for president in 2024, we would have created so many jobs that I'm back on the run, I'm a walk. Despite his big claims, Ye's plan to become president hasn't even slightly materialized. In fact, his financial reserves has been massively depleted as his brand continues to toxify, with everyone from Adidas to Balenciaga choosing to cut ties with him. 
Labeled as being so distasteful to the point of being deplatformed over his anti-Semitic claims, his decision to run again was met with overjoyed applause from some on the far right, including the infamous Beardson Beardley, who said that, if I have to compare Christian values, Ye is miles ahead for me right now. I'd love to see Trump fully embrace Christian conservatives in this country, and I hope he does, but until then, it's Ye24. And sure enough, Beardson wasn't the only social media outlier that's been banished to the far reaches of the internet. Now, his entire campaign team appears to be looking to utilize Ye's status as a pop culture icon to boost their own brands. Among one of the several far-right commentators, Sneeko, who has been kicked off of YouTube and now operates on Rumble, even mentioned the leveraging power of Ye's popularity as a reason for signing up. I'm taking an opportunity to do the most important thing that I could do with my brain right now. For the next two years, probably, we'll see. I want to fully dedicate towards fighting the new world order. If Ye announces, come to the stadium right now, I'm going to do a fashion show. All these hip hop heads are going to come through wearing a flannel wrapped around their waist, ready to hear some music off of an aux cord because they support Ye. If Biden said, come to this park, I will pay you $100 each, nobody's coming. That's the whole point. Although Sneeko talks a big game, it seems like a belief that Ye could actually succeed isn't really part of the equation. What matters most is being in his orbit. And by being there, their profile and outlook get into the mainstream in a way that they never could have without using it. Ye is essentially the Trojan horse, where right-wing figures can increase their audience, and it seems like Ye is too far gone to see it. For some, Ye finding new friends in the alt-right is the consequence of where he's been headed for some time now. Back in 2018, Ebro argued that after he first threw his support behind Donald Trump that they are exploiting Kanye West. And yes, Kanye West is okay with being exploited. He's an opportunist, a provocateur, a troll, a challenger of conventional thought, and somebody who wants to be seen at all times when he's ready to be seen. Considering that the right is almost never endorsed by anyone in the public eye, any sign of unity from a black person who might help to make their messages more acceptable to their community is even more rare. Now used by white and anti far-right groups to legitimize their hateful views, although it may not have been his original intention, it didn't stop a sign that read, Kanye was right about from being hung over on a LA highway by a neo gang. Also being flanked by the likes of Milo Yiannopoulos and Nick Fuentes, the idea that Ye is willing to be used by others to push their own status to the next level was drilled home by Dr. Rashad Ritchie. Kanye is being exploited, but it's his choice. He can continue to go and hop on these shows and do these ridiculous interviews. He has heroes and victims in his interviews. Every single time, Kanye makes the white bigot the hero. And routinely, the black victim is his villain. That says strategy. But surprisingly, the use of Ye by the far right as a way to normalize them is nothing new. Even before his 2024 campaign began, Harler was trying to unload their fringe social media network onto him at a time after it had already been investigated by the FBI for being a means of communication between those who organized the infamous January 6th insurrection. And things just continued to go from bad to worse for both Ye's public image and his reputation as a leader, with the creative world of his brand Yeezy coming crashing down in articles from Rolling Stone. Written from the testimonies of those who were inside the company, Ye was accused of everything from discriminatory hiring and firing practices to even forcing employees to watch Considering he probably knows just how corruptive ruling can be, it seems that he didn't realize just how damaging his dreams to achieve it would be. Now, the same artist that once said, no one man should have all that power, is experiencing what happens when you try to have it all. Instead of listening to his since cut off close friends, he surrounded himself with enablers, allowing himself to stray further from any kind of redemption. And now he's doubling down. In a recent interview with Gavin McInnes, he maintained that his endorsements of the Third Reich's evil leader on Alex's Jones show wouldn't hurt his chances of becoming president. I think it's awesome for a presidential campaign, he said. Yeah, to have someone that's honest, that understands the state of the world, and that's ready to listen to what the American people need. Jews need to work for Christians, he continued. I'll hire a Jewish person if I knew they weren't a spy, and I collected their phone and followed them to their house and have a camera all in their living room. I love Jewish people. I love all people. I love people who have, like, canceled my accounts and all that. But they should not be the people in charge. That's what I'm saying. They've had their run. 
Can another misadventure that has continued to distance him from the ordinary conservative voter, his decision to ask Trump to be his running mate along with Nick Fuentes has only continued to prove that his campaign is a joke. I think the thing that Trump was most perturbed about, me asking him to be my vice president, I think that was like lower on the <laughs> list of things that caught him off guard. It was the fact that I walked in with intelligence. So Trump is really impressed with Nick Fuentes. For some, Ye's decision to bring Fuentes into Trump's orbit could be seen as a tactical move, once again suggesting that there are undisclosed connections between the former president and the alt-right. Although the decision isn't being viewed as political genius by most, and instead just shows yet another example of Ye jeopardizing his reputation. Yo, Kanye, I gotta tell you the truth, bro. You ain't compared to Donald Trump when it comes to politics, brother. You're a musician. Stop it. You're a entertainer if you get like a million votes you're talking to a who got 70 million actual votes in the country bro this is why all these people keep violating yay you can sell some yeezys but you can't get americans to vote for you they look at you like a nut job as if things couldn't get worse, Ye's own political team is even starting to fall apart. Ye and I have come to the mutual conclusion that I should step away from his political team, said Milo in a recent statement. Ye is a genius whom I have come to love and respect. We remain friends. I will continue to pray for Ye in all his endeavors. Left to defend himself, it doesn't help that he's become increasingly isolated and is likely off his meds, which can be a catalyst for paranoia. And in recent times, Ye has suggested that he never actually had bipolar disorder. But this statement contradicts what he said in previous interviews, which detailed his ongoing battles with mental health. Define it for me. What is the mechanism that is malfunctioning or is taking a break in your brain, do you know? I wouldn't be able to explain that as much because I'm not a doctor. I can just tell you what I'm feeling at the time. And I feel a heightened connection with the universe when I'm ramping up. It is a health issue. This is like a sprained brain, like having a sprained ankle. And if someone has a sprained ankle, you're not gonna push on him more. With us, once our brain gets to a point of spraining, people do everything to make it worse. Having put himself into a risky position, the fate of his political career is the last of anyone's concerns, as it seems more important that someone protects him from himself, especially considering the fact that he does have a history of spiraling into a pretty dark place. Even me, when I already had the house and wife and the kids and the plaques, I would still have moments where I felt like he told the New York Times. I would still have moments where I'm addicted to Percocets and don't even realize it. I've thought about all the time, he continued. It's always an option in like Louis C.K. said, I flip through the manual, I weigh all my options. I'm just having this epiphany now because I didn't do it. Now facing more public scrutiny than ever, there comes a time where someone's safety is more important than whatever they're choosing to rant about. Once thought of as a genius, Ye has now become a social outcast, with his career facing more trouble than ever. The only thing he can do now is hope that he can escape the hole he's gotten himself into.